We recently redid our deck and forgot one important thing. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. So we're in the market for some end tables, as you can see. We don't have a ton of space under here, so we were looking for something smaller and round, and we also want it to be able to hold our furniture covers. We found some things that we like online, but they're not exactly what we're looking for. So let's see if Jeff can make something similar. And to make things interesting, let's see if we can make two of them for the price that it would cost us to buy one. Oh, f What? So when researching for this video, I saw Jason over at Bourbon Moth Woodworking make this really cool concrete coffee table. He spent like $1,200 on this blue mold gel in hopes that he could reuse it and make multiple coffee tables. But spoiler alert, it didn't work out. So we essentially need to do that, but way cheaper. So instead of following in Jason's footsteps and using that expensive mold gel, we're gonna skip that stuff completely and enlist the help of my 3D printers to 3D print some forms that will hopefully be reusable. So let's take a look at the materials. We got six bags of concrete. I'm really hoping I can do both end tables with five, but I got one just to be safe. We got these tubes, which will essentially make up the structure. We have an inner tube and an outer tube. This will ensure it stays hollow and this will just kind of be support for the outside here. And then we'll go ahead and cap these off with some plywood just so they hold the concrete. And then we're gonna 3D print a bunch of these forms to give it that fluted look and texture. And then we found this for $5 to mix concrete. We have concrete sealer, some fiberglass to ensure it's nice and strong, and a tub of lube so it doesn't stick. Petroleum jelly, the worst tasting jelly. So we have a budget of $230 to make two of these fluted concrete end tables. We found these large concrete form tubes at our local big box store and we figured they'd be absolutely perfect for the outer structure along with creating a hollow section to keep the weight down to a minimum. And we needed a way to cap off the tubes to contain the concrete and we had some of this leftover melamine and it's absolutely perfect. Generally stuff doesn't really like to stick to melamine but we'll still lube it up just to be safe. And then we'll get some help from the CNC to get some perfect circles. I first cut out an area to ensure I could center the smaller tube in the middle to ensure the hollowed section would line up perfectly and then to cut the outer ring, which will slide inside of the larger tube. And I do have a plan, not sure how good the plan is, but this will start making sense soon. I then cut more circles to take up even more space because more space equals less concrete. I then add a tape to the exposed size to give the concrete the best possible chance of not sticking to it. And here's where everything's gonna start coming together. So we have the tube and the two cap pieces. Then we'll be assembled with screws and a little bit of tape just to ensure nothing goes anywhere and then to cap off the other end with the other circles, and this will essentially make up the hollow section of our mold. Not sure if all the tie-back tape was necessary, but it made me feel better. Before we harvest the last couple pieces to our molds, I'll give you a brief explanation of how 3D printers work for those of you who don't know. So imagine working with Legos. You just build it up layer by layer with perfectly made pieces. A 3D printer essentially does the same, but it melts plastic into perfect layer lines and it builds it up slowly. So a 3D printer is just a little robot that squeezes out melted plastic into little perfectly precise layers, one on top of each other, until you come up with the perfect 3D printed creation. And this is what the printers melt, it's just a spool. It, they cost anywhere from $10 to $30 roughly. Ours were about $14 each, and I used three of these rolls to create the entire mold. We used our bamboo printers for this project as I knew they'd leave a nice clean surface and you can hardly even see the layer lines. I'll leave links in the description for everything we used in this video. It took several days to print all these and I kept it pretty simple just because I didn't really know what to expect. And then since I could only print so tall, we had to glue these together and to glue them together, we used epoxy. Which actually ended up working pretty well because there was tiny little gaps between the seams, but the squeeze out of the epoxy kind of filled those seams. And then we just put light pressure on the corners of the tables to get them to glue together. We unclamped them the following day and they felt plenty strong. We needed to make four of these sections and each section had three pieces. I quickly gave them a sanding with a 220 sponge just to make sure there wasn't any high spots. And here's where it should all start coming together. I'm just doing a quick test fit here just to make sure everything works out before we start filling this thing with concrete. So as you can see, there's a little bit of room around here. I wish this was perfectly snug because then it would hold these together more. This ring is essentially just to protect the 3D print so when I vibrate it and everything, it kind of just protects it and holds it in place. I don't expect any you know, concrete to really touch that. And then another thing, you can see these seams line up perfectly in one of these edges, which is fine. But then the opposite seam ends up in the middle of one of these flutes. So if I were to do it again, I would have spent more time playing with these circles to ensure that every seam ended in a corner versus the middle of a flute. But yeah, overall, I think it's gonna work. 
and then we proceeded to Tyvek tape these together to ensure they'd stay in their place and keep their round shape. And it's lube time. So I just gave a generous coating of this petroleum jelly over every single surface to give the concrete the best odds of not sticking to anything because I would like to reuse these. So this is the thing I'm worried about. Why? Because we need to get this, this worst case scenario, this doesn't come out. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I thought we had a plan. Oh, f What? What? This is on upside down. Cut. Yikes. Then to fix this situation, we took a little bit of rubbing alcohol and got all the Vaseline off we could to ensure this tape would stick. So we just had it upside down and just had to flip it. And covered in lube, this thing was not easy to handle. The inner cylinder got two screws from the bottom and then a couple screws in the outside of the tube. Here she be. I wasn't sure how much lube to use, so I used a lot. And now for the funnest possible part, mixing the concrete. You could get regular concrete for like $6 a bag, but all the aggregate would just make them that much more heavy. Then we just mixed and mixed till it looked about right. And then added this fiberglass reinforcement to give it a little more structure. And you gotta be careful with this stuff because if you over mix it, it will break it up and make it useless. And a quick message from this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. As someone who's made their living online for the past eight years, and as someone who's had their identity stolen, I've learned that the internet isn't always the safest place. So how do you protect yourself? With a VPN, of course, but what exactly is a VPN? A VPN, or virtual private network, hides your real IP address by routing your internet traffic through a remote server. This makes it difficult for websites, advertisers, and even your internet service provider to track your online activities. This is especially important if you frequently use public Wi-Fi, like in airports or coffee shops. Surfshark VPN gives you peace of mind by adding an extra layer of protection. Your data is more vulnerable on public Wi-Fi, but Surfshark creates a secure tunnel for your internet traffic, ensuring your data stays protected even on unsecure networks. Another great benefit? Better online deals. Some websites offer different prices based on your location. By using Surfshark VPN to connect from different countries, you can find better deals on flights, hotels, and other online purchases. Try Surfshark VPN free for 30 days. And if you're not satisfied, you can get your money back, guaranteed. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter coupon code 2Moose for four extra months at surfshark.com slash 2Moose. Link in the description below. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to pouring some concrete. And pouring concrete we are. This batch felt a little thick, so I mixed the next batch a little more loose. This better remotely work. I wish we had a giant spatula. And everything was actually going pretty good. We just used this stick to kind of mix it together, and then we used several different things to try to vibrate it, but this sawzaw actually worked the best. So it is hard. We're gonna unmold it, see how our day is gonna go. You can already see it, the gaps, it kind of split, which was my initial concern that the form didn't perfectly fit this uh, tube. And as you filled it up, it kind of just pushed it out a little bit. So hopefully we can kind of just sand out those imperfections and our day will go pretty well. But is it gonna release? That's the, that's the real question here. So I was really hoping we could just slide this outer shell off, but I think since the mold kind of expanded and or filled with water, it just didn't come off that easy. Oh, I bet we could have slid it off. Then just remove and cut the Tyvek that held it all together. I wish I would have come up with a better solution other than tape. So you use duct tape? Oh. And a huge sigh of relief because it came apart so easy. And here I was kind of regretting going so simple with the design as I should have tried to push the envelope a little harder, but I really had no idea if this was gonna work, let alone if these would be reusable. And now the moment of truth. Will the center tube covered in lube come out? I was more worried about this than I was the pieces actually coming off of the sides. But this part came off easy and then we got to the tube. I assumed if I would drill a hole in the middle and kind of like yank up on it, it would pop out. But I was wrong. That's a buddy. That's a good boy. So a little mallet magic to kind of just bust it in and, and the tubes are made of cardboard so we'll just rip it out. And now that I know I can't slide the inner tube out, I made this one with a lot less effort. We don't have a ton of experience with concrete, so I was a little nervous going into this, but it actually was going pretty well. And going into the second one, we had a lot more confident knowing that the first one worked. We mixed this one slightly more wet as the first one felt a little thick. 
And we did get some bubbles on the bottom lip of the flute, so I figured we'd fill it to that line and then vibrate the heck out of it to hopefully release more bubbles. We then topped it off, vibrated it some more, and just hope for the best. You can see the joints. When all the weight goes in there, it kind of just pushes everything out, but I put them a couple of wraps of duct tape on there, and it helped a lot with it spreading out. This one looks a lot better. And with high hopes, we started taking apart the second one. We couldn't get that tube off either, so we had to cut it. But this one came apart just as easy. Unfortunately, we still had bubbles on the top there, but you're really not going to see them. And now that I've done this, I have several ideas of how we would have went about this differently. But let me know in the comments what you guys would have done differently and how you could have improved upon this process. I do like the size and shape of these, but I do wish they were a little bit lighter, but I didn't know how much I could get away with on the thickness of the walls, so take a guess on how much these weigh. At least we don't gotta worry about them blowing away. And I've had this oak in this rack forever, and I figured this would be a great project for it, as I don't care if the sun beats the crap out of it. So I broke it down into smaller pieces so we could make them into round tops. And you can see they're pretty gray from being out in the sun for a long time. And that's just kind of what happens to wood when it gets baked by the sun. So it didn't really pay to use anything expensive and red oak's relatively affordable. And I've had this stuff laying around for literally ever. Forever. And then back to the CNC to give these babies some shape. First we need them round. I made them like an eighth inch bigger than the concrete pillars. And then I needed to cut down into them to give it like a lip so they wouldn't slide off and it would kind of hold in place properly. And just like that, we have some tops. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for the next one. I used a flush trim bit to clean these things up and then I gave them a quick sanding before we gave them some stain. I really didn't want to stain them but just said they had to match the gazebo. So we used the same stain we mixed for the gazebo so that they would match and then I gave them a nice hefty coat of poly to give them the best chance of the color lasting. Because they'll turn gray. And I actually was able to get most of the plywood out of these things. I just used a screw and a hammer and kind of like pulled up on them. I'll actually break the rest out once they kind of cure a little longer. I just don't want to be banging on them too much as we just poured them. We do intend to put sealer on these, but we're just going to let them cure a little longer as they're still pretty fresh. And I wish they were about 30% lighter because then I could kind of carry them by myself. Now they're just a little too heavy and awkward to kind of pick up on your own. And here we go. Here are the final pieces. I think they turned out pretty good for not knowing what we're doing and completely winging it. Um, the first one actually turned out better. There's less bubbles and it's more smooth and has more even color. The second one, I don't know if it was just because I mixed that one a little more loose and wet, but this one actually had more bubbles and I vibrated this one more. I'm not sure if that's just moisture or if I didn't mix it well enough, but let me know uh, why I got so many bubbles on this one versus this one. I'm assuming it's the concrete mix. I didn't mix it well enough or I added too much water. The lids fit so well on here. They're nice and snug and fit perfectly. They're actually gonna live on the backside over here, so they're not really gonna be super visible, but I think they turned out pretty cool. I wish I would have done a little more complex design as it surprisingly went easier than I thought, minus just my ignorance on concrete. I think it went pretty well. I mean, recently we did this deck area. If you want to check out that video, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'll put a link up here and along with in the description. Let me know what you guys would have done different in the comments. I'll show on the screen here in a second our budget and how much we actually spent and whether we were able to do it for under $230 or not. And now for the total budget, we wanted to make two of these for less than $230. So the concrete form tubes were $35 for both of them, which we used both. The countertop concrete was $21 a bag, coming in at a total of $105. Ideally, you used four bags and not five because they'd be not as heavy. So that was the most expensive cost was the concrete itself. We used three rolls of filament at $13 each, which was $39. We used the reinforcement fiberglass, which I didn't need nearly as much, and that was $16 for the two and a half pound bag. Petroleum jelly was $6. I used about three quarters of a tub. And then the melamine I actually had, so I technically didn't need to count that, but a half a sheet of melamine was $20. Coming in at a total of $221. And yes, I know I have a big shop full of a bunch of expensive tools, but you too can build these if you have $5 million worth of tools. All jokes aside, you could do this with relatively simple tools. You don't really need anything crazy to cut circles. And if you have 3D printers, pretty much any 3D printers could print something like this or something similar. 
I didn't really make this video to be a DOI video. I just kind of made it for fun to see if we could do it as we needed some end tables. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to check out our Patreon and support us that way, we'd greatly appreciate it. I'll also have links to everything we used in the description, which are affiliate links. Also check out the Surfshark VPN and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. If you support our sponsors, it helps support us make these videos and we appreciate you all watching.